This incident took place a few years ago in Riverside. I was a 24-year-old brunette woman trying to save every penny. I was stopped at a red light when someone rear-ended my car from behind. They sped around me, ran the red light and attempted to flee. I knew from work that any accident had to be reported immediately or we'd face serious consequences. So I decided to follow the person and they eventually pulled into a dimly lit parking lot just before the highway. It was 11 at night and the area was poorly illuminated. I stayed in my car, explained the situation to the 911 operator and waited. A woman emerged from the driver's side and a man got out from the passenger side. They approached my driver's side door and started talking to me. I opened my door to communicate, but the man immediately started pleading with me not to call the police. I apologized but explained that I had no choice or I could lose my job. He became irate and tried to pull me out of my car to show there wasn't any damage. Still on the phone, I attempted to close my door and the woman began crying. Suddenly, the man yanked open my driver's side door and lunged at me. He tried to grab my phone, but I resisted. Frustrated by my refusal to hang up or hand over my phone, he punched me in the face. Angry, I kicked him in the groin. He struck me again and managed to seize my phone, throwing it 30 feet across the parking lot. I watched it bounce along the pavement as they got back into their truck and sped off. I retrieved my phone which was still functioning and not broken and called 911 again. I reached the same operator. I reported the assault and she dispatched both the police and an ambulance despite my protests. I waited alone in the parking lot for 20 minutes before the ambulance arrived feeling frustrated that no police officer had shown up yet. My lip was slightly busted, and while the medics could understand my reluctance, they offered to stay with me until the police arrived. Another 15 minutes passed before a patrol car finally arrived, and the ambulance left. The officer who took my statement barely paid attention. When I tried to follow up on the case, I couldn't get in touch with him, and all my co-workers were outraged. I once got chased by a car like you see in the movies. I was a 19-year-old student when this incident occurred. To earn some extra cash, I worked part-time delivering pizza in the evenings and on weekends. I rode a scooter for the deliveries, which had a top speed of about 50 kilometers an hour or 30 miles per hour. It was a warm autumn evening and the sun was just setting, creating poor visibility in certain directions. I was familiar with the road I was on and knew it would soon narrow ahead. What I didn't anticipate was a car speeding toward me from the opposite direction with its headlights off. I couldn't see it because the sun was glaring directly into my eyes. We nearly had a head-on collision at top speed and being on a scooter, I would have likely sustained severe injuries. I managed to swerve out of the way at the last second. In my frustration, I gave the driver the finger for not using their headlights in such conditions. I remember the car vividly. It was a bright green Honda Civic with silver rims. A few days later, I saw the same car waiting at a stop sign as I and some other vehicles passed. I was returning to the pizza place and needed to turn left onto the street they were on. I decided to have a bit of fun. I crawled past the front of their car. As I went by the driver's window, I noticed it was slightly rolled down. I glanced inside and saw a massive, intimidating guy with a buzz cut wearing the most ridiculous pair of sunglasses. Next to him sat a stunning brunette. The guy immediately started shouting and cursing at me, and I instinctively retorted, Come at me! I instantly regretted it because this guy was not someone I wanted to mess with. I'm fairly tall, but this dude was on another level. I sped away from the car as quickly as I could but moments later, to my horror, I saw the green Civic in my mirror. The guy was now chasing me. I pushed my scooter to its limit but he could easily catch up in his car. There was a roundabout ahead which I knew I could take at full speed. The car, however, couldn't navigate it as quickly. This gave me a brief lead but it only took a few seconds for him to be right on my tail again. He was now tailgating me and I was terrified. Not satisfied with just following me, he pulled up alongside me with his passenger window rolled down. He's yelling at me to stop so we could talk. I had no intention of stopping. 
He was edging closer and the girl was watching me intently, our vehicles nearly touching. Then I saw my chance. There's a narrow side street to my right. I slammed the brakes and slid into the street. It wasn't my plan to lock the rear wheel, but it sure looked cool. But it wasn't over yet. The guy saw my move and braked hard too. Once again, he was right behind me. Suddenly, I spotted a tight alley on the left. I made a sharp turn into it knowing the Civic wouldn't fit. I sped back to the pizza place as fast as I could. Sometimes, I still see that bright green Civic and I make sure to hide or quickly turn into another street to avoid it. I was delivering pizza to a hospital one evening and followed the instructions to enter through a specific set of doors. I ended up at a check-in desk, but there was no one around. Behind me were several recovery rooms, all with the lights off. I looked around for anyone who might have placed the order, but I couldn't find anybody. Eventually, I just decided to wait at the desk for a few more minutes. I remember the place being really cold. From the room directly to my right, I heard a sad, weak voice say, I just want to go home. Please, I want to go home. I turned and saw an old man with several tubes connected to him. His lamp was faintly lit and he was locking eyes with me. At that moment, the person who had ordered showed up at the desk and we completed the delivery. As I turned to leave, I glanced into the room where the man with the tubes had been. But there was no one there. I rubbed my eyes. There were no lights turned on, no tubes, and no sign that anyone had even used the bed. To make sure I had the right room, I pretended to forget where the exit door was and checked a few of the other rooms. But all of them were empty. I sometimes think about that delivery and it still freaks me out. I went to pick up a pizza from a local shop and I've got an address that included the street name and instructions to deliver it to the door. When I arrived at the designated address, I found myself at a park. It was daytime, so I figured the customer had simply made a mistake. I called the customer and a woman answered. I explained the situation and mentioned that I was at the park. She seemed confused and claimed she wasn't familiar with the area. This struck me as odd. Then I noticed two men approaching fast from across the street. I locked my doors as a precaution. Thankfully, I did that because one of them went to the back door of my car while the other approached the front door. They were both trying to open them forcefully. I quickly accelerated, nearly knocking over the man at the front. While still on the phone with the woman, I told her, ma'am, I have to go. Two guys just tried to get into my car. She started laughing and said that those are the ones picking up the pizza and they're just young guys. I responded, this isn't funny, ma'am. I turned around and one of the men claimed he had called the police, accusing me of trying to run him over. I retorted, I don't know who you are and you tried to open my door. He insisted that the app says you were supposed to deliver to the park. I argued that that was impossible as he didn't place the order. The police arrived and fortunately saw through the men's story. The officers agreed that I had felt my life was threatened. Despite one man's claim about his app, mine clearly stated the address and to deliver to the door. The police provided me with a case number just in case the men decided to pursue the matter. The officer reassured me saying he doubted they would and advised me to go about my day. It was February 14th, 20 years ago. I had a delivery to make to the rougher part of town. I got out of my car and went around to the passenger side to retrieve the bag of pizzas. As I was standing up, a sudden flash of light blinded me and a ringing filled my ears. For a moment, my balance faltered and I had to steady myself against the car to avoid falling. That's when the pain hit and I heard the sound of shattering glass. I realized that someone had just smashed a bottle over my head. Now, let me tell you a bit about myself back then. I was what folks called a country boy. I grew up on a small farm and had my fair share of injuries from various misadventures, accidents, and just plain bad luck. I'd been kicked by horses, fallen off roofs while repairing them, you name it. As a result, I had developed quite a high tolerance for pain. Son of a gun! I yelled as I pushed myself up and turned to face my attacker. 
He must have thought I'd be easier to handle because he quickly snatched the bag out of my hand and bolted. I considered chasing him but then felt the warm trickle of blood running down my neck and back. I decided it wasn't worth it and I sat down for a moment to collect myself. One of the neighbors must have heard the commotion because she came out to check on me. She called the police and an ambulance and I waited there until they arrived. So, I ended up spending Valentine's Day evening in the hospital, getting shards of glass removed from the back of my head. I had to miss out on the plans I'd made with my fiancé. I worked as a delivery driver for Domino's, and our shop was winding down for the evening. I was pitching in with the closing tasks and had just taken half of the daily garbage out to the dumpster. When I returned to grab the remaining trash, I left the side door slightly open so I wouldn't have to juggle the keypad with my hands full. That was when a thief saw his chance to come in and wave a gun in our faces. The most terrifying and vivid moment for me was staring at the hideous brown tile, thinking it would be the last thing I'd ever see. I was given a week off but even when I returned, I was a jittery mess for several days. About three weeks after that robbery, I was at a customer's door when he suddenly flung his door open and pointed a gun in my face. It almost touched my forehead. He held it there for what felt like 10 hours but just 2 seconds in reality. He then told me while laughing that it's just a joke, and he thought I was one of his friends. He then revealed that it was just an airsoft gun. After the robbery, I carried my own gun every single day. The guy with the airsoft gun was incredibly lucky my hands were full of pizza. Where I lived was a broad avenue with two large clusters of homes. The houses were arranged like two giant circles that you would reach after traversing a narrow dark lane. The street was lined with a few grand old residences and a rectory. As I passed the rectory, I noticed a small battered blue Ford Fiesta approaching me. The closer it got, the slower it moved and the driver was practically craning his neck to get a look at me. There was nothing discreet about it. The car nearly came to a complete halt as it drew level with me and I started to feel a surge of panic. There was no one else around, just me and this peculiar guy. Determined not to let myself get flustered, I quickened my pace and refused to look at him. He drove off as far as I know. I continued walking home which was only a five minute straight path from there. I was constantly listening for the sound of a car engine and watching for any headlights creeping up behind me. I heard and saw nothing so I breathed a sigh of relief as I finally saw my house. I walked in, locked the door and found my mom standing in the living room chatting on the phone. I tried to interrupt her conversation to tell her about the strange guy in the blue car. For some reason, that's when she went to the front window and peeked through the curtain. She took the phone from her ear and asked me if it was that car outside. This all happened within a minute of me walking through the door. I thought to myself that it couldn't be him. I would have heard the car if he had followed me. Before I even had a chance to look for myself, there was a knock at the front door. I went to answer it only opening it a few inches, and there stood the guy. He was empty-handed and wearing a baseball cap. It was the same guy and the same car. I was shocked, but I tried to hide it. I asked, how can I help you? He asked me, did you order a pizza? I replied, no, I think you have the wrong house. Taking a step towards me, he repeated his question in a firm tone. I said, no, did you order a pizza? Before I could reply, my mom came up behind me and opened the door fully. She asked the person if there was a problem. This caused him to back up mumbling. I think I heard him say that he must have gotten the wrong address. He then slowly walked to his car and drove off. Needless to say, we were both quite spooked and made sure everything was securely locked up. Please drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more horror stories. 